Lawmakers are working late tonight. House members are debating a bill that would provide more than a billion dollars in tax relief, a plan that the governor is calling highly irresponsible. Jeff Ballion is standing by live now with a report. Jeff? Right after seven hours of debate, we are still waiting for a final vote on this bill. The issue at hand is the largest tax cut proposal in Minnesota history, one that pairs everything from individual income taxes to the sales tax on farm equipment. Income taxes would be cut by 16.5%. Most taxpayers would see an average savings of about $180, but roughly 15%, mostly middle-income taxpayers, would end up paying more. On the average, $152 more. Taken on balance, it's just a darn good tax bill that is going to make Minnesotans more competitive. This bill also cuts sales taxes by $350 million, including a reduction of the general sales tax from 6 to 5.5%. Also on the chopping block, property taxes. They would be cut by at least $40 million. Just before the House started its debate, Governor Perpich called a news conference to blast this bill for not including a $500 million reserve fund, something he wants to protect the state from a downturn in the economy. But House Republicans insist a $250 million reserve, as they've proposed, is adequate. Perpich calls it irresponsible. We have to increase taxes again someplace down the line and call special sessions. It's just going to be a disaster. Now, the Senate is expected to pass its own tax bill later this week, and then it'll be up to a conference committee to work out, a, work out any differences between the House and Senate versions. In the meantime, we'll be keeping track of what's happening here, and we'll get back to you later. Back to okay, thank you, Jeff. Also, This was the second day of action at the DFL party convention. Channel 9 reporters Jeff Ballion and Kevin Burns are in Duluth tonight. Here's their report. Good evening, everyone. Tonight, the DFL convention is starting to wind down. The delegates have completed most of their work and this evening are attending a lavish party at the famous Duluth Depot. Yesterday, of course, Rudy Perpich won the party endorsement for governor, but today, the man who is challenging him in the DFL primary was stealing some of the spotlight. Nice to see you. Hi, everybody. Hello. St. Paul Mayor George Latimer is scheduled to address the convention tomorrow morning, but he showed up today making himself readily available to reporters. In an interview with Channel 9 News, Latimer said he doesn't make much of the Perpich endorsement. What happens outside this hall from now until September 9 is what it's all about. September 9th is when Latimer and Perpich will face off in a primary. Perpich is confident he'll win that one and says the Latimer challenge has fizzled out. I just don't feel that that uh, there's anything much left of that campaign. Now, you should tell the governor an old statement, pride goeth before the fall. Well, there is some other convention news to report tonight, and Kevin Burns has the details. On the floor of the Duluth Arena today, Jeff, back to you. One of the goals of the DFL this year is to recapture control of the Minnesota legislature. That means holding on to a majority in the Senate and retaking the House. Party officials believe there is an issue on their side that can help them do it, the farm crisis. I think it's a vital issue, and it's one I think we're going to win on. We've got a lot of targeted uh, House and Senate races out in the rural areas, and we expect to win them. The DFL is banking that rural Minnesota is fed up with the Reagan administration's farm policies and will elect Democrats this fall. In the second congressional district, that would mean this man, Dave Johnson, a farmer and former Republican who switched parties over the egg crisis. I couldn't support a party that seemed to be bound, uh, bent upon destroying the things that I'd spent a lifetime to build. And I made the switch for the specific reason of bringing this uh, congressional race to a referendum on Reaganomics. And the DFL hopes it will be a referendum which signals a new era for the party. As I mentioned earlier in the show, the delegates are attending a big party tonight being thrown by Mark Dayton, the Commissioner of Economic Development. It's being called the biggest bash in the history of Duluth. And Kevin Burns is going to show us now what it took to put it on. Because the fireworks are being shot right from the back here. Tomorrow, the convention wraps up, but not before George Latimer has a chance to address the delegates. And of course, we will have a full report. For Kevin Burns, Bob Davidson, and John Overby, I'm Jeff Bellion reporting in Duluth. And organized labor.
If I'm elected, this is how it will be. There were three Minnesotans making promises like that tonight. Dave Jennings, Cal Ludeman, and Mike Minnie. They all wanted to be the next governor of the state, and after tonight, one of them will be carrying the independent Republican banner. Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Rod Graham. And I'm Heather Harden. Independent Republicans are in their second day of their party convention, and at this hour, the big question of the three-day event has still not be been answered. Who will be the party's candidate for governor? And tonight, Channel 9 has a full crew out at the St. Paul Civic Center, and for the latest on what's going on at the convention tonight, we go to Jeff Bellia. Jeff? Good evening, Rod and Heather. The endorsement race for governor is almost over here. Cal Ludeman, a former state representative from Tracy, Minnesota, is just a few votes shy of going over the top. All three candidates were running very close after the first ballot, but then Ludeman started to pick up steam. By the third ballot, Mike Menning threw in the towel and asked his delegates to support Ludeman. That left Dave Jennings the lone challenger, and so far, Jennings has decided to stay in the fight. So we are now in the process of counting the fifth ballot, and by the end of this, we suspect that perhaps Cal Ludum will have the votes needed, 60% of the delegates here, to win the party endorsement. Steve Goodspeed is on the floor now with some of Cal Ludum's supporters, and let's go to him now. Steve, what's happening? Hello, Jeff. Uh, as a matter of fact, Cal Ludum, and right now, that's what he's doing. Back to you, Jeff. Okay, thank you very much, Steve. Dave Jennings, as we mentioned, has refused to give up the fight so far. As I mentioned, we are in the fifth ballot now. Cal Luderman needs only a few votes to go over the top, but Jennings persists. Uh, he came up on the uh, podium a short time ago after Mike Menning conceded and asked that he, his delegates support Luderman. Jennings came up and said, I've worked hard to be a candidate. I'm not going to throw in the towel yet. He says, you're going to have to beat me. Kevin Burns is down with some of Jennings supporters, and he is mapping out what their strategy is. Kevin? Well, Jeff, as you know, Dave Jennings was the last to end. He feels confident that he can hold on to this fifth ballot and take the endorsement, literally, from the hands of Cal Luderman. We'll have to wait and see. Back to you. Thank you, Kevin. If, in fact, that happens, we no doubt will be in for a long night here. First indications were we thought we'd be done around the fourth or fifth ballot because Cal Luderman has picked up so much steam here, but if Dave Jennings can hold his own and start to rebound, we could be in for a long night. Uh, we should know in a few minutes whether or not Cal Luderman has enough support for the endorsement. And we'll just be waiting here and standing by and get back to you if we have that information. Now back to the studio. Okay, thank you, Jeff. And like everyone predicted, it might be a long night out at the Civic Center in St. Paul. And of course, we'll have continuing coverage of the convention through tomorrow night here on Primetime News. Reporters Jeff Valian and Kevin Burns are standing by. Let's go to them now. Good evening, Rod and Heather. It's cool and comfortable inside the Civic Center tonight, but that should change over the next 24 hours as delegates get around to endorsing a candidate for governor. There are three men seeking that endorsement, Dave Jennings, Cal Ludeman, and Mike Minning. But at this point, it's a toss-up. The only thing that's certain, it's going to take more than one ballot to pick a winner. As convention delegates checked in, the candidates checked them out. Against Democrats, not against ourselves. One thing the Republicans don't want to do is leave this convention mad at each other, but there is that possibility. Kevin Burns is standing by on the floor now with more on that. Kevin? Good evening, Jeff. If there is one message IR party leaders want, Del back to you. Thanks, Kevin. And that will wrap up our coverage for tonight. We'll, of course, be back again tomorrow when the fireworks will begin. The betters say anywhere from four to ten ballots before the Republicans can endorse a candidate for governor. Back to you, Rod and Heather. Thank you. Thank you, Jeff and Kevin, and like you say, we'll get warmer there by tomorrow night. We'll have more reports from the convention, of course.